Modern gear is better than vintage gear? Hmm. It's almost as if the new stuff was actually designed to be better than the old stuff. Yes, that is correct. This video is all about five reasons why modern gear is better than your beloved vintage gear. Yes, I'm well aware this video is going to piss some people off, and if, if it does piss you off, quite frankly, it's probably because you're old. I mean, like, 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 way, way old. Like, like, a lot older than me. And, and I'm 45. Number one. I just talked about this in the intro. Modern gear is actually designed to be better as good or better than the older versions of the same gear that it is replacing in a lot of cases. Yes, sure, there's exceptions. Sometimes they miss. I get that. But generally speaking, newer designs are usually better because manufacturers listen to their customers, the people who are buying their products, and try to implement the things that those people wish that the older versions had. Take the current version of the Fender Stratocaster. As of this video being recorded in February 2023, the top of the line production Stratocaster right now is the Ultra Series. And the Ultra Series, in my opinion, is about as nice as any, uh, is, is as nice as anything as Fender has put out in decades. Seriously, they are really, really impressive guitars. And they are better than the Elite Series that preceded them, which were better than the Deluxe Series, which preceded them, and those were for, around forever. Uh, and quite frankly, spec-wise and sound-wise and playability-wise, most of those things are, in fact, a lot better than even the golden age, the golden era of the 50s and 60s. Number two, the 1970s. This decade sucked for guitar makers, specifically Fender, Gibson, and Martin. I'm well aware that this is the number on this list that's going to piss people off the most, and the boomers are really going to come out and start crying over this one. I, I, I'm well aware of that. But whether you want to admit it or not, the quality of all three of those companies' products took a serious nosedive in the 1970s. Fender and Gibson have both gone under corporate ownership, and Martin was also experiencing one of the rougher periods of its history as the 1970s set up their extremely abysmal period in the 1980s, specifically 1983 and 84, when they were damn near on the verge of going out of business because it had been so bad in the 70s. Specifically, what am I talking about? You know, you had your basic finish flaws and, uh, you know, things of that nature, cosmetic mishaps that happened in all era of guitar of guitar making, especially with the, uh, you know, with the two big electric companies, Fender and Gibson. But in the 70s, Gibson put out more than a few guitars with, you know, warp necks or the necks installed crooked in the socket, uh, you know, hardware, you know, not, not, uh, not installed properly, things like that. There was a lot of quality control issues and, and Fender had the exact same problems. You know, both of them were under corporate ownership and both those corporations were trying to cut costs, uh, at the expense of the product itself. I spent a lot of years working in the, in the MI business and I bought and sold a lot of vintage guitars over the years. Trust me, 70s Gibsons and Fenders are one, not only worth a lot less than the 50s and 60s models that came before it, because the 50s and 60s were so much better made. But number two, you just run across a lot more guitars from that era that just have problems. You know, it's just a fact. Oh, even Gibsons from the 60s were still built. You had this going on. Had this. Yeah, shut up. No, they, yes, they did, but not to the extent they did in the 70s. Oh, even Fender still had you know, warped necks. And yes, they did, but not to the extent that they did in the 70s. Period. Up until 2007, I believe, when they finally reissued the RD for the very first time, Gibson didn't do any 70s reissues or tribute guitars or anything. They didn't even want to acknowledge their existence in the 1970s. Number three. So you paid $30,000 for your 1968 Gibson Les Paul? That's cute. It, it never occurred to you to think about how much really nice, practical, modern gear that you could have bought for that $30,000? Short answer, Psst, a lot. Way to go. Seriously, so many people are just absolutely fascinated with the fact of buying a guitar because it's old. When you get up into those five-figure, five and sometimes even six-figure digits of uh, you know price tags for vintage guitars, number one, the, the only people that can afford those are really, really high-dollar collectors. You know, practical guitar players don't buy that kind of stuff, and if they do, they buy it. It's already been beat to shit, heavily modified, and it's not worth anywhere near what it's you know, uh, what it once was. 
and and in which case they can do the exact same thing on a new, on a newer guitar, still a lot cheaper, and it'll sound exactly the same. People simply spend way too much money out of their fascination for old shit. Number four. You know what? If you start switching over to modern gear, I bet you your ego will thank you. What do I mean by that? Bro, nobody in your audience gives a shit what year your vintage Strat is from, what it's worth, or how much you paid for it. Not a single soul gives a ding-dong damn about any of that shit. Nobody in the building except you. Number five. You know, I don't know if this has occurred to anybody here yet, but uh, modern gear sounds better. It, it's more versatile, it does a whole lot more, and it's just more practical. Look at Marshall's current product line if you don't believe a word that I'm saying. Marshall, JVM series amplifiers. Pretty high-end amplifiers, been out for a decade or a decade and a half or so now. Really good sound amplifiers that do an awful lot. They make great modern sounding tones, they make great vintage sounding tones, and they do a whole lot of other stuff in between. Oh, there's no way it does. They don't sound anywhere near as good as my 68 plugs here. Yes, it does. Yes, it will. It will make all of those sounds, as well as just about every other every other Marshall sound that has come out since then, all the way up into the current modern era. It will get very, very close to all of them, including that of your 1968 Plexi. You just got to turn a few more knobs to figure out how to get it to do that. There you have it. There's my five reasons why modern gear is better than vintage gear. Now it's time for all the boomers to flood the comments section telling me why I'm a worthless, stupid piece of shit that doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, and uh, in other words, see ya.